are you guys doing? I've missed you guys so much. It is me, Angelica, again on Praise and Worship Team, and I want to welcome you guys back to our digital campus. Again, we've missed you, so we're so glad that you are here with us. You could have been anywhere else, per the usual, but you have decided to be here with us, so you are my brother and sister in Christ, and I want to welcome, welcome you again. Again, there are three things that we need you guys to do. You kind of know it already, but I'm going to go through it again just in case you are new here. First, if you are new here, go ahead and put that you're a guest down in the comments. We want to know you. We want to get to know you. We want to say hello. We want to like you. The comment, we want to love the comment. We want to welcome you to our family uh, the best way we can at this point. Number two. I'm going to need you to share this blessing, okay? It's going to be a great word today. We want you to share this. Go ahead and share. Push that share button so it can go on someone's wall, onto someone's DMs, into someone's text message, whatever you need to do so you can join your other friends and family into this worship and praise that we're going to take on here. And the last thing, I'm going to need you to get up. I know you are probably on that bed comfortable in your PJs. I know you are probably somewhere just looking on your phone, but I'm gonna need you to join us in, join in on this praise and worship because we're gonna sing some songs that you probably know. So we want you to join and give God the praise and worship that you know he deserves. So I wanna welcome you again to our praise and worship and to our word and our service today. And we are happy to have you.
Ooh, Jesus. I reminded of the old scripture when Gideon took 300 men. At first he had more than that, and God dwindled it all the way down to 300 men for him to get the victory over the Midianites, one of the ites. So check this out. They go all the way to encamp the enemy. And instead of fighting them and surrounding them and overtaking them, they lift up pitchers and lanterns and they just crashed them. Just and started yelling victory and a loud chant unto Jesus. And guess what? He calls them to overtake themselves. They didn't have to do anything. God won the battle for them. And so check this out. During your situations, in your circumstances, what is it that you are doing to declare victory? Are you laying down? Are you crying? Or are you declaring victory in advance? Are you praising in expectation? Are you declaring unto God that he is more than able and that what you've already declared has already happened? Are you thanking him in advance? Are you laying prostrate on your, your face and supplicating unto him with thanksgiving? So right now we declare victory in our lives. Right now in the chat, I want you to write victory. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if it's COVID and you've suffered through that, victory through that. I don't care what it is with your finances. You may be behind two months on writ. Victory through that because God is your champion. Amen. I'm going to, um, Jesus have mercy. God, you are so good. This is one scripture that came to mind. First Peter 5.10 reads, in the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself, not you, himself restore you and make you three things, strong, firm, and steadfast. Amen. And that right there is victory. So this morning, we're just going to pray according to that scripture. Pastor Mike had preached a few weeks ago, no more wasted pain. No more wasted pain. Those tears that you've cried at night, that suffering that you've been through, the trials and the tests that you've endured has all been for his glory. And he has done it for your good. He has done it for you and not to you. So this morning, we're going to pray that we're strong, firm, and steadfast in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we boldly come before your throne of grace, thanking you for being a God of victory, a God who's a champion in our life, a God of, who's victorious over all circumstances and situations. Matter of fact, we praise you when situations look hard, when situations look impossible. That is when you show up, Father. When we look at your word and we realize all of the victories that you've brought people through from the children of Israel to the flood with Noah, Father God, to, to just a woman with the issue of blood, woman who, who went before the unjust judge. There were countless and countless stories in the situations that look impossible, but we serve a God who does the impossible in the mighty name of Jesus. And right there, Father, that's where we can stand firm and steadfast. We declare your name mighty. We declare that you are great. We declare that you are powerful, Father. And the time for the time for crying, the time for laying in our bed at night and, and crying over what was, Father God, we get up. Lord. We take up our bed, Father God, and walk in the mighty name of Jesus, and we move forward in victory through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we thank you for being the God who is victorious in our life. Hallelujah. Victorious. Yes. And so right there, Father, in the name of Jesus, we make proclamations over our life, Father. Proclamations over those dead things, those dry bones, Father. We declare that we are living in the name of Jesus. We declare finances restored. We declare relationships restored. We declare that we're going to higher heights and deeper depths than you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything that we've lost in 2020, everything that we've surrendered to the enemy, we're going to get that back in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare victory right now. Hallelujah. Father, and right there, 
we continue to praise you in advance for what you're doing. Thank you for being the God of the turnaround. We turn in expectation right now. Thank you for being the God of the 180, Father God. We thank you for turning around our season, Lord. We thank you for coming as we come to the end of the year. You said the latter shall be greater than the beginning, Father God. And so in spite of how 2020 started, Father, we declare that this year is going to be the best year ever. Yes, we only have a few months left in the year, but that's the impossible that you do in our life, Father. And so we make that declaration right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that the temperature and the climate of the country, we declare racial reconciliation in the name of Jesus. We declare a new place of worship, Lord, for light of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, Father God, relationships restored. We declare that we're more anointed through you, Father God. We declare, Father God, the blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. And we move forward in that expectation. And Father, through you, through your blood of Jesus Christ, we bind up everything that is unlike you, Father God. We bind up distractions. We bind up um, hindrances. We bind up ourselves, Father God. We bind up um, idle minds. We bind up words of death that we speak. We bind up unbelief, Father God, that we may have done. We bind up idle hands, Father God, from moving out of lack of fear, Lord, or fear of success in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father God, we thank you in advance for doing it in our lives. Thank you for being victorious, Father. And this, we call this prayer so and done. And if you're believing this, if you're in agreement with us right so and done right amen in the comment section as we continue to move forward and worship amen Oh, wow. 
had an opportunity to worship this morning and open up your mouth and receive the anointing and the power of Jesus Christ right over the internet. You are missing out. Amen. In the Bible, they had to give their best unto God, right? We don't have to sacrifice lambs and sheep and dove anymore, but our sacrifice of praise is your best your hallelujahs, your all of your might. When I played football, we said, leave it all on the field. And so when we worship, we leave everything there. Our burdens, our cares, we, we our thankfulness, we leave it all there because he is worthy of our worship. Amen? Amen. As we continue to move forward in worship, we have a special guest today. Today, Pastor Mike is taking a week off to celebrate with Lady Keisha and her birthday. So if you haven't had a chance to wish Lady Keisha happy birthday, now's a good chance to do that as well. Tag her in the comments. Bless her with the fruit of your lips. And if you have her cash app, bless her financially as well. Because it's good to give unto those who bless us. Amen. So we have a wonderful treat. Uh, a mighty man of God. A powerful man of God who's going to bring forth an exciting message today. So we're going to welcome to our screen. Welcome to your laptops today. Uh, Dion Sampson. Amen. Say, preach Dion. Write it in Dion. the comments. Say, preach Dion. Preach Dion. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, light of the world. Come on. You at home, praise the Lord, light of the world. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be here to bring the message. Um, I don't know how I follow um, your pastor, but you pray for me and uh, we'll see what the Lord says. All right. So our scripture this morning is first Samuel chapter 15. And I am going to begin at verse 10. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds at home to get it. First Samuel 15 verse 10 and uh, I have a lot of scripture to read but I'm going to condense it so just follow me and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation 1 Samuel 15 beginning at verse 10 it reads then the Lord said to Samuel I am sorry that I ever made Saul king for he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. Verse 13. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the loin of cattle I hear? Samuel demanded. Verse 15, it's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats and cattle, Saul admitted. But they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you, Saul asked. And Samuel told him, although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? 
And I'm going to jump down to verse 24. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. So I'll stop right there, and I want to talk to you from this thought, the substitute teacher. The substitute teacher. Well, first, I want to deal with the word substitute. I don't know if you've ever um, encountered substitutes in your life. Um, I've learned that, you know, even in grocery shopping, uh, when you don't want to pay an expensive price, you go for a substitute um, because it's cheaper. But in this school day series, let's talk about the substitute teacher. So being in education for over 20 years, I value the power of the teacher. When I look back over my life, I discover in the reflection that it was a teacher that was instrumental in changing my life. However, when I look back over my life, I also pause and I smile when I get to those moments when we look forward to the day when our teacher wasn't in class because we knew that it would be a good day because the substitute was in the building. It was during those days that we did what we wanted because we knew the substitute didn't know our names, didn't know our parents, but most importantly, they did not have access to our records. Without those records, you couldn't go grab the phone numbers to contact our parents, our grandparents, and whoever else your parent listed on the emergency contact list just in case you forgot who you were. When the substitute was in the building, it allowed for an opportunity for us to do things that we wouldn't normally do with the teacher in the classroom. However, as an educator, uh, I am learning that there's danger to having some long-term substitutes. The student doesn't receive the proper information needed to grow, to stretch, and to learn. Yes, when the substitute was present, the turn-up was real. But oh, if we stayed in this environment too long, we start to become complacent, lazy, and want to do those things that make us feel good versus doing those things that make us better. So my brothers and my sisters this morning, um, in my humble opinion, we have started to enjoy the substitute teacher even in the body of Christ versus remaining in class with the teacher who knows all about us and what and wants what's best for us. I got a question for you this morning. What or who has become your substitute teacher? Some of us have made drugs and alcohol our substitute over sobriety. Some of us have made, during these upcoming winter months, our mistress our substitute over marriage. Lord help, some of us have made horoscopes and self-helps our substitute over studying the Word of God. Some of us have made feelings and emotions our substitute over what God has said. What is or who is your substitute? If anyone had a reason in the text to become a success, it was Saul, the first king of Israel. In the beginning, everything was in his favor. He had a divine call from God. He had the power of God's spirit to enable him to do what God wanted. He had a wonderful praying friend in Samuel the prophet, and he had a group of men who supported him. Yet God had to discipline Saul because of his disobedience and lack of trust. Saul went down in history as a great failure at a time when the nation of Israel 
needed great success. He lost God's blessing. He lost his crown. And eventually he lost his life. But how do we explain a tragedy such as this? Saul was to blame for his own failure. He abandons God's way and he began to live on substitutes. So for a few minutes, I want to talk to you about some things that I found in the text that was the demise of Saul. Number one, don't substitute your talk for action. There's a difference between speaking and doing. Saul was instructed to go and destroy the Amalekites. God was allowing Saul another opportunity to serve him by using him to destroy a longtime enemy of his people. How many prisoners was Saul supposed to take? How much spoil and plunder were Saul supposed to take? The answer is none. Some of us, my brothers and sisters, are guilty of holding on to an enemy versus letting it or them go completely. I'll pause right there just so you can begin to think about what it is that God has told you to release and you keep on trying to hold on to it. God wanted the enemy totally destroyed, but Saul wanted to hold on to some things. Saul claimed to be obedient to God when he really wasn't. My brothers and sisters, we've got to stop talking about going to church. And we got to learn how to become the church. What is it that you've allowed in your life to take a place of the teacher because your flesh has desired the substitute? God knew Saul was lying, as did Samuel. Before long, even the people knew about Saul's lie. It's so easy for us as God's people to substitute words for action. When God tells you to pray for those who despitefully use you, that's difficult. When God tells you to turn the other cheek, that's difficult. When God says to give when you're down to your last, that's difficult. But faith without works is dead. So we got to learn how to replace our talk with our action. What would happen if our words matched up with what we believed? What if we believed we could lay hands on the sick and they would recover? What would happen if we believed we could speak to a thing, whatever it is, and it will come to pass? What would happen if we matched up our action with our words. So you can't substitute what you say with what you do. The second thing I learned in this text is Saul taught us you can't substitute excuses for confession. Saul tried to excuse his disobedience by claiming that the animals were only kept to be sacrificed to God. He then tried to excuse his behavior by putting the blame on the people. I'm going to read this again. Saul tried to excuse his disobedience by claiming that what he was doing, he was saving it for God. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's talk about this substitute for a minute. Anybody ever been in a substitute relationship? <laughs> well, God told you no, but you said, God, if I can just minister to him, if I can just minister to her, I promise you I'll win him for the kingdom. That's a substitute. We're trying to hold on to the thing that make us feel good when God wants us to totally disconnect. But God, if you use me, I'll save him. You don't have the power to save him. All right, I'm going to leave that alone because I see some of y'all frowning. Watch this. 
You can't substitute excuses for a confession. Saul had more respect of the people than he did for God. And God, the more God elevated, the greater his moral decline. Pause. The more God elevated him, the greater Saul's moral decline. I want to say to somebody this morning, uh, you've been asking God to elevate you. And I want to tell you, elevation is coming only after he can trust you with this elevation. God is more concerned about who you are versus trying to elevate you on another platform. He's not going to increase your wealth if you're not doing with the seed what he already is giving you. He can't give you a man if you're not complacent with being a woman. He can't give you a wife until you've learned how to be a man. So elevation comes with some instruction. And God is not going to sacrifice your elevation if it's going to cause you to morally decline. Mm. All right, that's number two. Number three, Saul taught us you can't substitute sacrifice for obedience. Anybody, y'all can go through the motions, but what God wants from us is our obedience. What I'm learning about the body of Christ, we look good, we sound good, but when it comes to our obedience, we're lacking. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And sometimes I think that we have gotten so used to our sacrifice that we forget about our obedience. It is our obedience that pleases God. You can come and sing and play and preach and still find yourself in hell. One thing I'm afraid of is that there are many of us who think we're going, we're going to miss it because we lacked our obedience. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Number four, which is a key that blesses me every time I read this text, that Saul has taught me, do not substitute reputation for your character. Saul was only concerned about his reputation with the people. He wasn't concerned about his character or what God thought of him. Saul insisted. Instead of confessing the truth, he said, I did what I did because of the people. How many of us, y'all, are guilty of putting God on the back because we were more concerned about the thoughts of people. Some of us don't even witness to our own family because we are worried about our reputation. We don't want people to know that we are changed for real. So what we do is we assimilate to our environment. We come to church and we turn up. God is holy. But soon as the benediction is given, nobody will know that we was in the presence of God. You cannot allow your character to be minimized because of a reputation. Never substitute your character for reputation. Because if you really love God, people will never have to hear you open your mouth. It'll become visible. You ever been in a situation and people just come up to you and say, there's something different about you. That's your character. Don't put so much work on your reputation because if you do it God's way, he said, I'll make your name great. 
You're working too hard for your reputation. When if you just yield to the will of God, he will make your name great because he knows you'll make his name great. So the last thing I want to tell you is um, with this substitute teacher uh, that I learned is never substitute God's will for your will. God warned Saul numerous times. And I think some of us, if we just be honest on today, uh, some of us are guilty on occasion where we wanted our will to supersede God's will because we just want God what we want. If we're just honest, and it's okay to be honest, there are times where you looked at your check and be like, uh, no, I don't know about this whole 10% tithe thing today, God, uh, cause I got bills to pay. God, I really don't know if I want to pray for this person to really, uh, talk bad about me out here in these streets. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really don't, I really, I really don't want to love them really don't. because I'm cool with not liking them. God, I really don't want to speak life to them because I'm cool with speaking death to them. God, I really don't, I really don't want to go ask for forgiveness because I'm not the one that did anything wrong. But those of us who belong to God knows that God uses us in some strange ways to do some things that make us feel very uncomfortable. When you got to go hug the one you know stabs you in the back. When you got to bless those that you know would never look out for you. God's will is greater than your will. Because I know, and I know some of you know, that when you do it God's way, it is always better. Because God just blows your mind. When he takes your little and turns it into more than enough. When he's taking your enemy and caused them to be a footstool. When those who tried to stop you from walking in one door, God used them to open up the door and they don't know why they did it. God's will is greater than your will. So, y'all do not allow your lives to be ran by this substitute teacher. You got to learn not to allow your words to be greater than your action. You gotta stop with the excuses. And when you run into a place where you did something wrong, you gotta confess it and stop trying to minimize with your excuses. You gotta learn how to be obedient versus your sacrifice. And do not, please hear me, do not minimize your character because you're more interested in your reputation. Lastly, Please, y'all, yield to God's will and not your own. I'm reminded about the substitute teacher. Um, there's this scripture that I love. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. says, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That's the only substitute that I want to be associated with. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Let me make this plain to you, this this scripture in this little illustration. One time there were two brothers. One brother murdered a man and came home with blood all over his clothes. The police were coming and the older brother loved his younger brother so much that he said, take off your clothes. Then the elder brother gave him his own clothes and put on the bloody clothes. The older brother was arrested 
by the police and put in prison in place of his younger brother. In the same way, y'all, Jesus took our place yeah. of punishment when he shed his own blood for our lives. So instead of the substitute teacher, the things that are you, getting you caught up in life, remember what Jesus has done for you. And it is my prayer that God reminds us of his love for us through what Jesus has done. He reminds us of his grace, his mercy, his sacrifice, and his salvation. I am grateful for the lesson of the substitute teacher. But oh, one thing that I got excited about when I rehearsed my school days is that I enjoyed the turn up for a day. But the next day, when the regular teacher would return, how our lives were changed. We shaped up, we sat up, we straightened up because a real authority was among us. There was no substitute. <laughs> there was no stand-in. We had in front of us, when the substitute was gone, the real deal. It made a huge difference in my life because I needed that structure. I needed that authority. And what I've learned about the substitute is that the turn up the flesh, it felt good for a moment. But when I learned what Jesus has done for me and I walk into this power and authority that he died for me to possess, my life is greater. So y'all, I want to encourage you today, do not be swayed by a substitute teacher. I want you to rest in the fact of what Jesus has done for you. And I want you to walk in the power and authority that he has given you. Even in this pandemic, yeah. you got power. You got authority to speak that no sickness comes to me. Yeah. None comes to my house. Yeah. You've got the same power that rests in Jesus now resides in you. You can speak to sickness. You can declare everything that God has spoken in the heavenly and declare it to be so yeah. in the earth. I'm not tripping about the pandemic. It's real. Yes, I've lost loved ones to it. Yeah. But God's still on the throne. Yeah. Yes, the election concerns me. But I recognize that God is still yeah. in control. And the same power that he used to raise Christ from the dead is the same power that resides in me. So I don't really care. I care. But I'm really not going to trip who sits in the White House because I serve a God who sits on the throne. And he rules and he reigns everything. So y'all, don't trip on the substitute. I want you to walk in your power, your authority, and I declare that even during these rough times, you are victorious. God bless you. If you're like me, you blink and summer was over. While things are starting to cool off around us, we are motivated more than ever to keep things on fire here at Light of the World. I'm Tim, and I'd like to thank you for checking us out today. Here are a few things we've got coming up in the upcoming weeks. I hope you've been enjoying Pastor Mike's new school day series as much as I have, but we don't want you to have to wait another seven days before you can get what you need. Be sure to check out School Day's playlist on Spotify that has something for everybody. And in true school fashion, Pastor Mike is giving out weekly homework assignments to enhance our journey. Let's not just get a passing grade this season. Let's graduate at the top of our class. It's back. Morning Manor Prayer and Devotional has returned at its regularly scheduled time at 7 a.m. each and every Monday. But 
We're doing things with a twist this go round. Make sure you go to the App Store and download our new app, as we will be posting Morning Mana videos directly and exclusively to the app each Monday. COVID-19 has really flipped our lives upside down, and we are committed to finding safe ways to go about our new norm while continuing to touch lives and spread the gospel of Christ. If you are interested in baptism, check out the Next Steps section on our app. From there, you'll be able to fill out a form as we host our first baptism since the pandemic. Trust and believe we are taking every precaution to ensure you and your loved ones are safe. So sign up today. October is a month of celebration. First and foremost, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. According to God's word, in Ephesians 4, Pastor Mike is a gift to the church, and we want to treat him as such. But then secondly, God's gift to Pastor Mike is Lady Keisha. Her birthday is October 10th. Whether they prayed for you, fed you, counseled you, or even yelled at you, take a second this month to let them know how much they mean to you. Our world may never be the same, but if anything, our Light of the World family has proven to be resilient. We want to continue to encourage you to stay engaged, keep tuning in, subscribing, and participating. Tag a friend, hit the share button, and help us to continue our mission to get the word out. Join us as we continue to adapt to our new means of evangelism. We can continue to have a major impact not only in the city of Cincinnati, but around the world. Thanks for checking in, and as always, we're so glad you're here.